Hi guys, welcome back to this week's video. So this week is going to be how I made this hammerhead bat. If you don't know what a hammerhead bat is, it's, it's actually a real animal, even though it's a weird Halloween looking thing. Um, so this little guy is available in my shop, so check it out. I do have payment plans uh, available. Just shoot me a message and we can work a plan out. Um, so I previously did a sculpting video on him, so how I sculpted the head, so you can check that out. Try and remember to link it below, but I never do. Uh, but it is made out of, uh, Super Sculpey for the front, but I'll talk about that in the video. It is fully posable as well, so the wings are even posable. The little claw things on top of the wings are also posable. His head's a good, got a good range of motion, and also his legs can move as well. He has a a uh, plastic ball and socket armature inside so he's pretty poseable and pretty steady um, with that armature so if you want to know how I made him then keep watching alrighty so if you haven't already watched my video on how I sculpted the head for this hammerhead bat head over to my YouTube and it'll be on there in one of my recent videos but I'll try and remember to link it below I never do but I basically sculpted it out of Super Sculpey this time, so it's that beige coloured semi-translucent colour. And I wanted to sculpt it in that colour because I wanted a little bit of that fleshy translucent, translucent tone to come through. So I'm putting over a really light wash of some acrylic paint over the bits that are going to be showing. And this is just to bring some more life and dimension and more colour to, to the face. So I looked at some reference images and basically the little fleshy parts were like a beige colour with like a ready tone to it and I wanted to capture that so um, I'm just that's why I used the sculpt, Super Sculpey and I'm um, just adding a really light wash of the watered down acrylic paints. So for this doll, I'm going to be using a ball and socket armature combination with uh, aluminium wire armature. So that'll basically be for the wings and the ball and socket armature will be for the body. But I'll get more into that in the other bit of the video. And I might also mention that this little one is available in my shop at creaturesofnat.com. So check it out there. I do have payment plans available. So just shoot me a message on my website for any payment plans and I can talk you through this the process. But this is a one-off doll, so I won't be making another one of these. And um, yeah, just check out my shop and you'll find them in there. the final bit of the painting I sort of went a bit more bold with the colors and I applied that wash first but I wasn't too happy with the way it was looking so I wanted to apply something a little bit more um, harsh on the top of the on the top of the, the snout I guess you want to call it and that's basically because the the fur that's going on there is pretty thin so I wanted some of that brown to show through on the under undertone anyway so I just went ahead and painted it with the brown acrylic paints so same deal with the feet here so this is a resin cast of a bat claws that I've used on my flying foxes and they look exactly the same as what the hammerhead bat feet look like so it'd be really great to use these and they're a bit more sturdy than just using clay or polymer clay I can sculpt them out of um, cost clay but Let's avoid that at all costs at this point <laughs> because uh, until I get some fresh cost clay, the Kickstarter one is just really difficult to work with. But I'm using that same brown to color or paint the feet 
And then once that's dry, I'm applying a out of frame wash of like a red oxide color just to bring that red coloring through and sort of blend it back to the little flappy bits on the front of the face. All right, so making the wings. So I have filmed this whole process making these wings and it will be a tutorial that will be in both my shop and on my Patreon. So I am having, I have to edit the video still, but I'm working on the full process of making the wings, but here's a little snippet of what you'll get in that video from start to finish and what I do, how I made these wings. It's pretty easy process. It's not too time consuming. It's just a lot of steps that need to be done to be able to make these wings. So um, I'll have it up in the next couple of weeks. I do have to edit it, like I said, and I, I want to make sure it's like a good tutorial, but at the end of it, you'll be able to uh, create some nice bat wings and you can use them for dragon wings as well or anything similar like that that has these thin membrane type wings. Moving on to the faux fur, so I'm using a faux fur that I used for one of the prairie dogs that I made for the Calgary Zoo, so I had heaps of this fur left over. So this fur worked really well for a hammerhead bat. I thought it worked, um, it looked really, really similar to all the reference images on Google. So I ended up drawing out some patterns for a for the front of the body and the back of the body. And it's the same pattern that I use for all of my flying fox dolls as well. It's really it's the same, pretty much the same body. So I'm just drawing out those patterns and it's really an easy pattern to use because it's a two part pattern. And the reason it's a two part pattern is because when you can sew those wings in between both sides and the bat body is a really a simple, simple body. at what the fur is close up. You can see it's got like a patterning underneath when you push it the other way, the opposite way. And it's not like a nice brown toned pattern with like heaps of different colorings in it. So it's a really nice faux fur and it's nice to work with as well. So I'm using a small pair of sharp scissors to cut out both sides of the body. You always want to account for your seam allowance, but I have a body making tutorial in my shop and on my Patreon as well, if you want to know how I make these bodies. But these are really, really simple to do. And because this doll is going to be hand sewn majority of it, I really can only sew on the machine. I basically only do it in between the legs and one side of the neck because I have to get these wings through and the armature through the actual body and then it has to be sewn um, with the wings in between. So basically I'm putting out the, the body to begin with and I'm finishing creating this armature. So I'm using the smallest armature that I have in my shop and it works really well for small dolls and it's, um, it has a variety of different little accessories that you can pin to it like this little Y thing which works well for the like a hip joint and you use these tools to pull the sections on and off. So I have a pre-order that's going to end soon and I'm looking at pre-ordering at the end of September. So there's a 10% discount on the coils. There's three different sizes and two different lengths of each size. So I have this size in my shop at the moment. Um, it is a 1 8 length and it is the smallest size. This is the one that I use the most and um, yes, so if you want to order the coils, check out my shop. There's a whole bunch of them there and it is a pre-order and then I'll be ordering it probably at the end of September or early October. And then once I get them, I can ship them out to you. But once I once the pre-order closes, the, the cost of the coils will go back up to full price. And, but I will have stock in my shop, not much. So um, if you want to get the if you want to get the coils and however many coils you want, um, yeah, consider jo uh, doing a pre-order for the coils. Anyway, enough rambling about coils. <laughs> so the final little bit is just getting this head on the body, and then I can start sewing it all together and making it kind of bring it all together and and glue it together 
and making it look like a doll. So basically, first what I do is I'm, I'm just setting up the wings to make sure that, that it all fits together. So I'll need to trim the, 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 the edge of the wings a little bit more just so it fits in to the body because otherwise it's going to be poking out of the body. And then uh, we can start sewing. So sewing, 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 sewing. The, the bat dolls always require a lot of sewing just because, like I said before, you have to sew the wings on both sides of the body to be able to incorporate, in, incorporate it into the body. But it's a lot of hand sewing and it is tough on the fingers, so always take a break. I use a ladder stitch to sew all of my bodies together and that basically is like a blind stitch and it makes the, the edges of the fabrics curl together and it looks like a nice seamless line. And it works really well for faux fur because faux fur's pile is quite long. So it works well to hide any of the seam lines. So once I've sewn up the front bit of the head, I'm going to start gluing the head to the neck and that will act as a good solid base for the doll. And that means I can start pulling the, the threads a bit tighter and finishing off the body a bit tighter and adding any little polyfill. So you don't want to like sew everything together and then find out your body's too small or something's not fitting correctly. So I always like to have a nice solid base before I um, continue with any more sewing and, and finishing off the doll. And I'm using a tacky fabric glue. And it's just from my local craft store. It's nothing special. Um, you can find something similar in your craft store. It's just like a clear and it's really thick and it works really well to adhere the fabric to polymer clays or resin. Just test it out on anything that you're using to make sure there's no wacky stuff going on. So same sort of deal with the feet. Again, gluing it up once it's all been sewn up, gluing up all the, all the pieces and the leg areas just to finish it off. Once I've already put the polyfill in, and that will be your last little bit that your doll needs to be finished. All right, now moving on to the little wing nail tip bits. So I created this little tip bit out of epoxy sculpt and I was doing it out of resin, but I think epoxy sculpt works a little bit better because I have to attach it anyway. And it sort of adheres to the little wire that you're creating to begin with. So I'm painting it up with that same sort of paint that I'm using on the, on the feet and a little brown nails as well. So you can use black or whatever color you like, whatever nail color you're going for. And then I'm basically closing the section up. So more of that tutorial is going to be on that bat making, the wing, wing making tutorial. So keep an eye out for that and I'll go into more detail in that tutorial. So once that's done and everything all, is all sewn up, I give it a nice little trim and make sure everything's looking fine and it's sort of taking shape of that bat. And then once that's done, I can some I can add some faux fur to the head. And you can see what I mean by the little flappy bits at the front being um, visible and also the ears and how I wanted that little bit of translucent lucent beige color um, in to show with those bits. So once the faux fur is applied, I start adding any little details with paint. And it's basically, little details around the eyes and like creases or patterning anything like that so i'm just using some watered down acrylic paint to paint over these little bits and just blending it in a bit more and making it look more alive with the wings uh finishing off the wings i'm adding a couple of little veins something i didn't do on the other ones because they're black wings and you can't really see much anyway but for this one, because they're brown, I wanted to add a little bit of detailing to the wings, which were the veins. And I'm using a really thin brush and some watered down paint. And I'm just painting in those veins where I see fit or where I think it looks good. And I think I really added a nice little in-depth of um, detailing to the wings as well. Make it look a little bit more alive. And I did the same sort of thing with the white winged bat. I added some more pink colouring to all of the bony areas and I think it really brings it to life when you add details like that. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a thing or two. Keep an eye out for those tutorials and snap them up in my shop if you want a weird looking creature. But that is it for today. Um, thanks to my patrons for supporting me. I really appreciate it. I, um, I hope my Patreon has bits and pieces but if you want anything um, let me know 
and I can definitely make tutorials and stuff. But you can also check me out on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok at Creatures of Nat in my shop, creaturesofnat.com, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.